Lesson 1, Dr. Nuremberg's Mind-Body Workout System. Dr. Nuremberg's Mind-Body Workout System. What's the main issue in physical fitness? First, let me tell you what it is. It's not going to surprise you. People don't stay with the program. They may stay with it a month, two months, three months, however long. But eventually, people stop, most people. And they say, oh, I used to be in shape. I used to bench press 400 pounds. I used to bench press 300 pounds. I used to do X, Y, and Z. How often you hear when a guy hits his 30s or 40s, what he used to do, but he's not doing it. And the main issue any personal trainer and any gym has to deal with, people don't stay with it. As you know, half the people that join the gym don't stay with their membership. So it'll be very good for the person, for the personal trainer, and for business at the gym if people stayed with this and made a lifetime commitment. And so that issue could be dealt with a mind-body workout. For example, the thought could be, uh, I am committed to working out at least five minutes the rest of my life, at least five minutes. I will stay with my working out no matter what obstacles come. Nothing will stop me from working out the rest of my life. So it really, it, it becomes, a, you want a lifestyle. It's not a phase, it's a lifestyle. So the person may be working out for a sport or maybe doing it just for their own health or physical conditioning, but they, even whether they stick with the sport or they don't stick with the sport, whatever it is, they want to keep, keep up with their health. They want to keep up being fit, strong, and healthy and happy. So what we're adding for people is a, the basic power thought is to stick with the training. If you have an injury, you work out another body part. If I have an injury, I'll work out some other body part. I won't stop working out. If my shoulder's injured, I'll do more tricep work for a while until it heals up. My leg's injured, I'll do upper body. I have an upper body injury, I'll do lower body workouts. I will work out for the rest of my life. So in terms of gyms, and in terms of even athlete, elite athletes, how often you have a guy who one time was an elite athlete, now he sits around just drinking beer, doing nothing. Very dangerous. Well, we're, we're about to stop that because now we have the tools through the mind-body workout. Now, to begin with, we're going to deal with the ultimate issue. And I'll read, empower your constructive thoughts and words to have dominion over your destructive thoughts, words, actions, and feelings. And you will rise above the fires of suffering and will enter paradise on earth. That's the bottom line of what we're dealing with. We all have negative thoughts. We all have destructive thoughts. That's natural. That's normal. That's human. That comes with no effort at all, you'll get negative thoughts. And there's a, an adaptation reason for that because when we have a pain or something's bothering us, it's, it's, it's the signal to survive. I've got to deal with this negative situation. But for most people, it's really an act of will and effort to come into constructive, positive thoughts. It's an effort to do that. So a person to do this and to rise to it has to keep certain thoughts going all day long. You can't just do it once, like New Year's resolutions. It don't work. For instance, I'm going to do this now and make the New Year resolutions, and within a month, it's, it's over with. Person says, makes a, 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 you have a therapy situation. Person says, oh, I'm going to be this way with my wife. Maybe he does it for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and it's gone. A person gets on a certain training program. He's making progress. Maybe he has to take a trip or something. Never gets back on it. So this gives us a way because of the mental fitness. We're adding the mental fitness component to the physical fitness. And it can even be brought into spiritual fitness because a person can spiritualize their, their power thought. For example, I will work out all of my life, or it could be with God's help, I will work out all of my life. So that was spiritual, that's a spiritual power thought. So empower your constructive thoughts. If it has dominion over your negative thoughts, say you have a, a resentment towards somebody or uh, uh, you, you feel you just can't do something, you feel too limited. Well, to the extent that you can have a thought that has dominion over that so that you can do it, or you forgive the person. For example, let's say you look at somebody and you just feel repulsion. You go, oh, yuck, man, what a fat. Oh, man, you look yuck. And then get that reaction. We get people get that. Yeah. There's certain looks on other people. Well, a constructive thought after that would be to follow the negative self-talk with a positive self-talk. So the constructive thought would be, and I wish you, my brother, a long, healthy, prosperous, peaceful life, a long, good life for you. So you've followed the initial negative reaction, which was involuntary, 
was in a constructive self-talk. And thus you've, now, you've then related to, with, with compassion to this person. You didn't just indulge that judgmental revulsion. You overcame it because you, you committed. Well, this takes, so a per, this takes a lot of discipline. And the power thoughts, you always have to be ready for it. You have to keep the thought going all the time. I'll follow all negative reactions with positive self-talk. That has to go all the time. You have to always be ready. Why? You never know when you're going to get negative reactions. You never know when something, what you think is bad or negative is happening. So you have to always be ready for that situation. Empower your constructive thoughts and words. To have dominion over your destructive thoughts, words, and actions, and feelings. And you rise above the suffering, uh, the fires of suffering. Now, what is suffering? You know, when you go yuck and you get a negative reaction or you have resentment towards somebody, that'll eat you up. That'll age your cardiovascular system. You're walking around angry. You're thinking about it. The person did this to me. They did that to me. And I'm so angry and I want to do this to them. You're walking around. It's damaging your heart for sure. We know that for a fact. It's also damaging your other organs. It's interfering with your sleeping, your eating. It's destroying you. But through constructive thought, constructive thought could be, I forgive you. I have compassion for you. Uh, I got to take care of business with you, but at the same time, I forgive you for what you did. So you rise above the fires of suffering through a constructive thought. You may have to keep repeating it. You see that person again, he starts coming back to you, you son of a gun, you did that to me. Well, I'm not saying you got to be a doormat. No, you got to take care of business, stop the person from harming you. But at the same time, it's better if he stuck you with a knife. Most people get stuck with a knife, and then they, they go like this with it by working themselves up into wanting revenge and anger and all kinds of things. So what they have to do is when the guy sticks you, and then it just falls out because the knife just disappears because he says, well, I forgive you, my brother, and I love you. That would be one example. And, it, and it's gone. It's either gone instantly or over time. Uh, you may have to keep repeating that thought because the resentments can come back. So you keep that power thought going. I forgive you. I love you. I'm here to serve you. Those are very powerful thoughts. Those are thoughts I used in one case with my sister that got me past a five-year anger uh, and resentment period. And as I kept developing these constructive, the system of constructive thoughts, I started rising above the fires of suffering. And we'll enter paradise on earth. Well, what is that? Well, when we feel a ray of joy, we, uh, we walk on and say a power thought, thank you. I'm so grateful. Thank you. I will do it, and I'm extremely grateful. I'm grateful. So as we enter into gratitude, as we enter into forgiveness, as we enter into compassion, as we transcend our own pettiness, what happens? We start getting a ray of joy, and that is what paradise on earth is about. When we start feeling more joy, more love, more positiveness, more constructiveness, that is paradise on earth. The, 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 the cloud lifts, the fog lifts. We're more focused. We can work out better. We can do our jobs better. We can focus on what we're doing. And then we're going to go into the methods to do this, the full technology, because what the mind-body workout is, just as we now have a whole technology for sending out rocket ships and, and spaceships and all kinds of things with computers, we have the external technology. What we have in the mind-body workout is the internal technology. How do you make a thought and a feeling stronger? How do you more deeply internalize it so it's really a part of your life? How do you more deeply internalize it so it manifests in your behaviors? This is now addressing the internal world as opposed to all the technology we have. The external technology can just be used for exterminating each other more efficiently. That's, that could be used that way, unless it's balanced with the technology of the internal person. So as we have the technology that we have, and I've, I've identified 14, 15 variables through the mind-body workout that will strengthen that internal thought that will more deeply internalize it and will make us more committed to it. So now we're going to have a discussion, any questions, your own comments about your own successes and failures of empowering your constructive thought to have dominion over your destructive thought, words, feelings, and actions. What, what have you noticed in yourselves with respect to as personal trainers and, and as human beings? What have you noticed in yourself? I've noticed in the past, you know, growing up, I mean, I had, was overwhelmed by so many destructive thoughts when people did something to me, you know, especially those that's closest to you, your loved ones, it really hurts. And uh, a lot of times I would just be angry and would want revenge. 
and that was you know that was really like being immature and because of my destructive thoughts just had dominion over me just totally it did, I didn't have room for constructive thoughts. Would you say that, 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 that negativity having dominion over you, would you say that's a, a, a variation of, of hell on earth? Is that, too, is that too strong a term? Was that accurate? Well, actually, you know, well, hell on earth, actually it was, and me not even realizing that it was hell on earth because now that I'm older and I have a constructive mind based on my spiritual transformation, my um, being in a positive mind, just understanding, you know, the spirituality as far as God and the importance of Jesus Christ in my life, you know, it got me past the destructive thoughts, and I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I have more constructive thoughts. And at the time, when I was experiencing hell on earth with the, the destructive thoughts that had dominion over me. Well, let me ask you this question. Let me interrupt you. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this question. Would you say, you know, we talked about the fear God, and, to, and, and is, would you say one way of conceiving of it psychologically is to fear that if I don't follow the spiritual laws of forgiveness and compassion, I'll be consumed in my own negativity? Well, yeah, that's one. Uh, that's one I mean, because we love that. We love God. We have a love. Mm -hmm. But also the fear, it, it's wise yeah. to fear that negativity, yeah. our own negativity. Right. Would you agree with that? It's wise to fear that and say, I don't want to go back to that. So if a person lives in that negativity and destructiveness, they say, that's hell. I don't want to go back to that. that that's a motivator. Once yeah. a person realizes that, gee, that was, that was hell, I don't want to go back to that. I refuse to spend more of my life mm -hmm. in, a, in that state of mind. Yeah. And so I, I fear it. I dread it. I don't want to go back to it. Because whatever you do to me doesn't compare to what I do to myself with it. Is that true? Yeah, and I didn't even realize it was damaging. I dread what I will do with it. You, you represent a minor threat. You just stuck me. If I start going like this with a knife, I'm tearing myself up. So that's part of what then drives a person. It certainly drove me in my own personal development why I developed the whole mind-body workout was to help myself who really need help. I need help. I know that. And I've been able to help thousands of other people help themselves with it. Because right now people are just... Whatever thoughts come to their mind, they have no way of dealing with it uh, unless they use certain power thoughts and, and, and whether they use prayer or religious commitment and, and the whole mind-body workout, which is a way to really strengthen it day in and day out. So you saw that in yourself. You saw the negativity. You saw that yourself go past that. Uh, and, of course, we're never done with the temptation towards that negativity. Right, right, I mean, right. you, 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 in your case, now other people uh, who are not Christian, they have some other approach that works for them, or no religion. This approach works for them, no matter what religion a person is, whether they're atheist or a believer. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in your case, as a Christian, uh, you still, I'm sure, get tested, and I'm sure negativity starts up. And then uh, this gives you a way uh, that you can overcome that. Mm -hmm. I think about my health as well, too. So just being angry. You know, especially reading your book, I didn't realize that it was damaging to the organs. And it's known it's a it's a it's a medical fact that anger people who walk around angry are more prone to heart attacks. That's a known fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, obviously, it interferes with the sleep. Yeah. It interferes with your sleep, which then weakens your immune system. That anger, that negativity, will damage the immune system, damage the cardiovascular system, uh, will interfere with proper digestion, which in turn has many spin-offs. Uh, physically. Mm -hmm. So we know this is really dealing with the mind-body connection through the mind-body workout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Mike, what, what are some of your thoughts and questions, feelings, reactions that you have for that? Well, uh, I could tell you uh, a story. Uh, last spring, actually, I was involved in an event, and uh, one of the guys, he was a professional scout, and I, I was supposed to get one of his players ready for the NBA, and he was judging me by my appearance and my age, not rather on my skill. And he made a comment uh, that, oh, you know, this guy doesn't look like he's ever competed or this and that, and made a comment on my appearance. What he didn't know was I was involved in a car accident. And that really hit me in the head. And it said, you know, this guy's going to look past me and my abilities just because of my appearance and is not going to take what I had to offer when I'm obviously the best offer for this guy. And then DeAndre could tell you, I got mad, but... I sublimated my anger. I got mad for a month, but I sublimated my anger into a positive way, and I went to intense training. I evaluated myself like everybody else, and I said, I'm going to show this guy 
one thing I, I thought of a constructive power thought uh, actually to relate to that situation. It's no matter what people think, I know I can and I will. Because when people tell me I can't do something, that's an instant thing that I'm going to show these so people. No matter what people say, mm -hmm. I, I know that I can and I will. Exactly. I know that I can and I will. And I'll, you know, and I'll overcome these things. And as DeAndre could testify, you've only known me for a little bit over a month now. I mean, I've made a big transformation back in a positive direction in my physical appearance in order to get back into competing and not only just being fit and having a successful uh, life again. And uh, when word gets back, you know, they're going to know that I'm not just uh, I'm not just somebody to walk over. I, when I say I do things, I am what I say. You know, I'm a walking, talking. So you have congruence of word and action. Exactly. Which is, of course, one of the key characteristics of all successful people. They say they do what they say they're going to do, and if they say they're not going to do it, they don't do it. Exactly. As opposed to people who have substance abuse issues, they don't have congruence of word and action. They'll say, I'm not going to use drugs today, and they use or somebody who has a problem with food, say, I'm not going to eat that, and, and, and they eat it. So uh, that congruence, and we're going to go into that with a whole chapter on congruence training, mm -hmm. uh, where word and action. Of course, the biggest danger of somebody not keeping to what they say is, after a while, nobody believes them. But worse than that, they don't believe themselves. Mm -hmm. So when a person knows that they, whatever they say they're going to do, and over they say they're not going to do, they're not going to do. Once a person knows that, then his word himself itself has meaning to him, gives direction, gives reality itself to him because his word is, is, is good, and it's, it's as good as done when he says he's going to do it mm -hmm. because he always has that congruence of word and action. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get into that whole congruence issue. For me recently, I set a new world record for 65 to 69 years old. I did a drug-free lift, which I've told you both about, was 365 pounds. Now, I opened with 340 which I had a lot of confidence and went right up. Then 350, I had a little doubt about, not a lot. Boom, it went right up. But let me tell you, when it came to doing 365, I saw the, bar, my, I, the image came, the bar came down and didn't go up. I saw it laying on my chest. It was a negative image. I had some self-doubt about 365. And I forced myself on the image to see it go up, but it wasn't a natural up. It was just forcing it. I, on a natural basis, saw it coming down and not coming off my chest. So I had to take a thought to offset my own doubts and insecurities. I'm sure many athletes, even the greatest athletes at times, will get a negative thought and have to find how do you deal constructively with that. Oh, yeah. So what's the thought I took? I will, lift much, I will lift much more than I think I can. I will lift much more than I think I can. See, my first one was I can lift much more than I think I will. I can lift much more than I think I will. I said, no, that's not it. Because I can doesn't mean I will. So I changed the power, so I made it stronger. I will lift much more than I think I can. So I gave credence to the doubt, but said that's not going to stop me. So in, in any kind of sport, they have to have some way of dealing with their insecurities, their doubts. Because even the most confident guy, he might not be feeling the top form that day. Maybe he feels coming down with a cold, maybe a little injury in the shoulder, leg. He can start telling himself, gee, I'm not at my best. He's already given himself a negative thought. Mm -hmm. So he'll need a power thought, which he can in more deeply internalize, being even though I have a slight knee injury, I'm going to really do well today. I'm gonna, it, nothing's going to stop me. Mm -hmm. So we have to always address that. And we're, and we're dealing with sports. We're dealing with personal training. We have to, nothing's going to stop me. I have a slight injury. I'm putting a little bit of a cold. But you know what? Even with that, I'm going to really shine today. I'm going to step right above that. I'm going full blast even with these kind of negative thoughts. I'm, I'm moving ahead. I can and I will, and I'm so grateful for that. And it, it gets that going. And then, of course, you, as people who become uh, board certified and as uh, gym counselors in the uh, Nuremberg certification process, you're going to be able to train the people on how to do that. And then they're going to come up. The power thought will work for a while, but then you can learn ways to then help them use variations of it. And, and ways properly to work with it. So uh, empower your constructive thoughts and words to have dominion over your destructive thoughts, words, and feelings, and actions, and you'll rise above the fires of suffering and will enter paradise on earth. Another way to say that in, in a less spiritual way is to say empower your constructive thoughts to have dominion over your words, over your destructive words, thoughts, and feelings, and actions, and you will achieve great strength, health, and happiness. Another way of saying that in more down-to-earth terms. So we have in, in the book on, on gym therapy sections that break this down and go into it more and more. 
then that's that's in chapter one. Chapter two, we go into power thoughts for constructive thinking. And so we're just going to do that one today, and we're in a three-month program. And what we're going to do is for you and anybody who's watching our, our DVD, we're going to demonstrate a power of the mind that we all know we have, but we don't know how to fully utilize it. We take it for granted. So right now as we're sitting here, and I'm going to ask the viewer to do this right along with us, have a pleasant memory. It could be something that you ate this morning that was good. It could be some, something that you achieved recently. But have a pleasant memory. I'll do it right along with you. Okay. You have it? You have it, DeAndre? Mike? Okay. Came pretty rapidly, didn't it? Naturally. I had one, boom, just like that. As soon as you say it, you're able to do it. Now, there's a couple of interesting things about this. You were able, as a matter of will, to put your mind into the past at will. And now you're able to do that at will, you're able to determine the polarity of the thought. You chose a positive thought. You could have chosen a negative, you chose positive. So you had the polarity under your control and the time dimension. You went to the past. And you did it easily, you did it naturally. And there's another factor. I know prior to my asking you to do that, you weren't thinking about that memory. I don't have to ask you. I know you weren't. I wasn't either. Boom, right back in just by telling ourselves to do it. And that's the power that underlies the whole mind-body workout is that power. That's the power as we develop it. The implications are enormous. Now, let's do the same with the future. Let's take a thought towards the future, something we're looking forward to. It could be seeing somebody, a certain accomplishment, a certain meal, a certain event. Take a moment and think about something you're looking forward to in the future. The future. Okay. I got mine. You have yours. Both of you have it. Did it come rapidly? Was it hard or was it easy? <laughs> it was easy. And I know the person watching. It came easy. So again, you were able to put the choose the time dimension, the future. You chose the polarity. You chose something positive. And again, prior to my asking you to do that, you weren't thinking about that. So we were all able, all of us, both of you, me, and you who, who are watching this, were able to project your thoughts to the future. We're the only species that can do that. No other species can choose to think about the past, the present, or the future. They simply react to stimuli that come up. Maybe occasionally a memory will come because they look at something that reminds them of that. But... We can choose at will to do this. Now let's take a thought about the present, something that we appreciate about this moment, that we have vision, that we can see, that we're sharing this fellowship, this learning experience together, whatever. Take a moment to appreciate something about the present. Okay. You're smiling, so I know you're really stepping into this, right? Yeah. You got it. You did. I did. And again, we weren't thinking about that beforehand. We changed the time dimension, we've gone to the past, we've gone to the future, we've gone to the present, at will. And again, prior to you doing that, you weren't thinking about this present thought, and you just brought yourself into that. So we're able to move our attention from whatever it is into whatever dimension we want to take it. Now, this then means that we have some control over our cognitive environment. We can enhance the cognitive environment. We can give a direction of constructiveness, a direction of positiveness to our thoughts doesn't mean all our thoughts are positive, but it gives us a direction of constructiveness as personal trainers, as human beings, to move our own psyches in a constructive, positive direction, no matter what's bothering you. You could have something really irritating you and still put yourself into a constructive thought. So today we've gone over that you can, we've seen the, in reality, you see, we didn't spend a million dollars on a grant to show this. Every human being can demonstrate this. Every human, every adult, every genetically normal person can do this, and children can do it. A five-year-old can do it, and a 90-year-old can do it. It's across ages. Everybody's going to be able to use this mind-body workout. And right now, you're starting part of the, the, the mind part of the system because you're able at will to go to the past, to the present, to the future. You're able to have constructive, positive thoughts at will when you weren't even thinking about that. You know, that's an enormous power, and that's, that's the basis where people be able to 
achieve whatever they want in their athletic pursuits and in any kind of goal setting, any kind of emotional things they want to achieve, any kind of career objectives, educational objectives. It's the same process. They're going to use the mind-body workout. What we just did is we just did a little bit of a mind workout. We, did a, we, we just did a little bit of mental fitness. We just did an example of mental fitness. Now, we can then put our thoughts not only on past, present, and future, we're going to choose to put it on a constructive thought. For instance, well, let's take the constructive thought, I am extremely grateful. Let's say it together. I am, I am extremely, extremely grateful. grateful. I am I'm extremely, extremely grateful. grateful. Now let's just think that thought. Okay, we did it, right? We chose a constructive thought. We didn't go to the past, the present, and the future. We chose a thought to have. When you were silent, both of you had it easily. You who are watching it, you had that thought. I am extremely grateful. I don't have to even talk to you to know you did it. And you did it flawlessly, naturally, easily. So we now have shown that we can then put our attention on any time dimension, but we can also put our attention on a particular thought. Well, that particular thought, that constructive thought, we call a power thought. And if, then you give the instruction, I will repeat that thought out loud and silently, some combination of that, every five minutes the first day and twice an hour thereafter. We're putting our attention on that thought. We call that thought up, whatever you want. It can be done any time. So this is the basis, the mental part. We all know what physical fitness is. You're now seeing the mental fitness. You put yourself into constructive thoughts, the past, present, and future. You put it on gratitude. You chose to put your attention on that kind of thought, to call it into consciousness at will. So in the beginning is the possibility of constructiveness. And after that comes the word. In the beginning is the word. We, we, we have a constructive word. It could be a thought or out loud. And then from that, we go into a constructive attitudes, and that leads to constructive action. So this is uh, uh, one of our early sessions, one of the early lessons in the mind-body workout. Uh, we are on your way to become gym counselors, and we're dealing with the book, uh, Dr. Nirenberg's Gym Therapy, uh, which took me over 30 years to write this book, and it only takes about 30 minutes to read it, but it takes a long time to fully learn it, and we're going to hopefully within a three-month period, have it where you become uh, skilled at using it in your lives and for your clients.